Whew, do we all need a moment? Oh, all right. <laughs> Nee Fishman. Rebecca Lydiard. Douglas Smith. Mark O'Brien. Lynette Ware. Maje Bastistas. Alia Kanani. Joey Klein. Thank you. to taking your questions. I just have a little note here that we ask for your consideration regarding the ongoing SAG and WGA strikes. To ensure respect for our plan panelists, please refrain from discussing any struck work or struck companies. With that said, I'm wondering, do we have any questions immediately off the jump? Will you take a question from up here? Will you take a question from up here? It's not about a delicatessen, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I, thank you. Yeah, I, 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 miss, I miss you too. I hope maybe you went to my high school and maybe you beat up on me and now this is your chance to actually say <laughs> that you're sorry, which would be great. I, I, but no, uh, I, I miss Victoria, yes. Um, here's what I suggest. I, I, you can hear me. I, I'd love you to ask questions to my really brilliant cast and they're an amazing Canadian cast. They've done an amazing job. So if you have any questions for them, um, please. It, they're, they're super smart about all of their roles and they're doing incredibly complex things, so. Do we have questions for the cast right down there? Yeah, it's you, it's gonna probably be. Oh. We see the in interaction between the director and the, the, the play and how he makes it, uh, brings it to life. As actors, do you have a similar process? Uh, does what you, what you created relates to your personal experiences, and to some extent at least? I think I can speak to this. Um, when I first read the script, and uh, I read uh, the role of Clea, who is this woman who works in the props department, immediately I said to Adam, oh, I absolutely recognize this person. I have met her, every single props person I have ever met, is very similar to her, and so yes, from that respect, I definitely identified with her. Anyone else? I just have to add that uh, although I've never been in the shoes of a woman whose husband decided to fall in love with a younger woman, I mean, you look at Amanda and you get it, right? <laughs> <laughs> I just had to say that, that was, that was the work I did. <laughs> just had to look at how beautiful she was, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I get it. Anybody else? Question. I think it's power of the imagination and we all have imaginations and how far you can extend yourself from that. It's pretty creative and watching all these amazing actors do that in their own rights was really inspiring. Mark O'Brien's being really coy and shy. It's kind of shocking, but anyway. You're not, you're not gonna hog it or? How much time do we have? <laughs> it all began on a dreary day in Newfoundland when I was born. I'm joking. Um, yeah, I, I think, um, what was the question? 
Yeah, that was clear. <laughs> yeah, it, it, just about relating to our characters and, and, and whatnot. I think it's when you have someone like Adam writing a script. He, what I love about his films and this film in particular is is that everyone has a point of view. People don't just walk through and not have a life of their own. Everyone comes from a point of view. And even my character in this film, it's like, it's questionable at, at, at least what he's doing, but at the same time, but he's coming from a place he thinks it's okay. And I think that, that those are the best films, those are the best stories, those are the best writers. People who give someone their own point of view and just being some sort of nefarious character who just doesn't care. And I think everyone is well-rounded. We're all well-rounded. That's the, that's the point of, of movies is to show us if you show someone who's one-dimensional and doesn't come from somewhere, then what's the point? So I just think Adam did a great job of, of illustrating that in all the characters in the movie. It never even crossed my mind that your character was nefarious. Never. Never. Wow. I'm not being never. facetious, because you guys are, yeah, you, you have an arrangement, you're exploring, you're separated. I, That's what I said. It seemed really clear. <laughs> That's why Thank I you. ask them. I, I really have, like, they're, they're incredible. Like, you guys are, let's, I'm just going to walk off the stage now. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Neve, like, you want to say anything about being an actor, even though you're just a producer? <laughs> Question up there. Yes. Hi. Yes. Yeah. Great. That is such a great question, Doug. Um, well, um, so you know, it's interesting, when I first met our costume designer, um, she, well no, it first started with a conversation with you, and you said you, you felt like I had a, uh, you wanted Luke to have a lightness, because there was this heavy, toxic, masculine energy being in, like, enacted upon Janine, and you felt like Luke was the light in the, the lightness of the masculine energy that she was enacting with. And our costume designer dressed me in a lot of light colors to try to, to like there was, I was often wearing white, if you noticed. Um, and, uh, you know, um, I can't remember now if it was the conversation with you or the costume designer. I was trying to, you know, like, think about that with her. And there's seven, you know, there's seven men that interact with Janine. It's called seven veils. Did you count that up? There's, 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 and, um, I don't know. I've lost my train of thought. Um, I do recognize the voice who asked that question. That's, he, that's why he called me Doug, because I worked with him on a movie about half a year ago, but, yeah. um, I don't know. I've lost my train of thought. But I, I, I do think that, uh, trauma, like, there are ways that it gets transferred, and, and that's a really, really compelling question, yeah. and, uh, I, I think it's, it ripples through the film in terms of these uh, power relationships. And, uh, and I think it's very weird that she puts her hands, Amanda, through his hair in such a way because of, a, a, you know, like that's, that's, I think she's crossed the line, clearly. Um, and she's probably crossed the line inviting him back to her place, probably, as well. Uh, and he, uh, yeah, but those are all great questions. Just quickly, actually, uh, you said that to me right when we were walking off stage, like, Literally, how you just put it was what you said right when we were walking off. Yeah. You used that exact language, trauma and transference. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of nice that mm -hmm. a filmmaker has an intention and it's that clear that then the question becomes like, was it literally intentional? Because it gives room for the audience to ask that question. But that was the first thing you said to me when we talked about the role, which I guess goes back to your question. Like, you give so much room for the actor to get involved, but you give such specific guidance so that it's grounded, and that's rare. That's really special. Yeah. Yes. I think we have time for only one or two quick questions. There's one right there. Yes. Do you, do you hear the question? Uh, uh, in a film where uh, it's all about the transference of the, uh, like the power of the men and these seven men, she w would like to hear more about from the women, about the roles. Of 
Uh, well, I mean, I, I was, it was really interesting. That the, the questions I feel kind of are all aligned, but it's, I think that as a woman, you know, for me, as an assistant to Amanda, and watching what she had to go through, and knowing that you're up against a system that's going to judge a woman, that's going to, you know, direct a woman more than she has to be directed, that's going to, you know, give less space and give more of the credit to her, you know, the former director of the opera, and seeing that she was in this situation, but knowing that I had to answer to folks, delivering that information to somebody that I, I'm watching go through this very traumatic moment in her life, and, you know, everybody knows bits and specks of her history with the director, and everybody knows bits and specks of what she's going through, but nobody knows the full story, but you can watch it unraveling slowly. You know, I think that women have this great empathy, this power of empathy that we have, and so sitting in the middle of that balance, and that's something that I feel, you know, drawn from life as women. Like, you know, you sometimes, you do want to speak up, but then you don't know if it's, if it's okay to, and so you're stuck in the middle of watching this happen and somebody being, um, you know, in a position where, where they're not necessarily being treated fairly, and you don't like what they're, what's happening, but you have to just, you have to roll with it, right? And I think a, a lot of that happened in this film, you know, there was a lot of that sort of tension of people watching something that they knew was not right and didn't have the power to do anything over, right? <coughs> yeah, <coughs> very briefly. Uh, to piggyback on that, what was so interesting is that a lot of my work was I was sure that everybody probably knew there was an affair, right? But nobody told me. So I love that question because I pride myself on being a woman who kind of understands any room that I'm in. And so to play this character, to know that there are secrets that people have kept from her uh, for the sake of the production and the art, I thought, what kind of person allows that, surrenders to that, what is love? So I, I'll just leave it there for everybody to kind of soak that in. I had my own answers to that to play her authentically, um, very 360 from who I am as a person, but that's the question that I had to ask. What is love? And what are we able to sacrifice of ourselves and others for, for love? I, I think I'm gonna piggyback on that too because I think on the other side of this discussion about what it means to have power and a situation where something so clearly is wrong and you feel that you have to speak up, um, that in itself is a power. Um, and of course, Clea finds herself in this situation where she has a little bit of power and she has to decide, or she feels that she has to do something with it and she can do something really good or she can do something bad, but that might also be good. And I think it's a really interesting question. And in this world of social media where everything is out there and the conversations are quite nuanced, um, it's really interesting to see a character sort of grappling with that. And my hope is that you all go away and maybe have a conversation mm -hmm. about it with each other. Mm -hmm. um, I certainly had some interesting conversations with my parents mm -hmm. uh, yesterday morning after we saw the film uh, about what that meant and did Clea do the right thing? Did she do the wrong thing? Um, so I think it's quite thought provoking and I hope that, uh, yeah, you can all take that away with you after today. Mm. Wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, oh, did anyone hear? How did it feel with the boardroom scene? Um, did you need to, how do we, how do we uh, 
I, I think you were just saying that there, there was a, a contradiction there. Yeah. And I also think this is a really interesting thing to discuss because when we get into these conversations about uh, something uh, of this nature happening, absolutely, we must speak out. But in uh, the organizational setting, there are legalities and lawyers and someone might lose their job and there's all these implications and residual effects that are gonna happen. And with that, uh, because lawyers need to be involved and someone's contract needs to be broken, that also means you have to be quiet about this. And so now we're back to being silent. And it's this very like, oh wait, well we were gonna do something about it and you're very responsive to what I'm saying, but also we're right back at the beginning and I have to be quiet again. Um, I'll be brief. Um, my yeah. interpretation very quickly is uh, very much what we were talking about in the car ride over. <laughs> that there are a lot of structural changes in our society globally that have not yet been dismantled. Mm -hmm. And so that scene for me and us, and I love that you said conflict and that there was tension in that scene because each person in that uh, room had to represent a different angle and story. So I think what you saw there and what you felt, which, which Adam so brilliantly put together, was everybody's position, as you said earlier. Everybody had a goal, everybody has a mission, something to obtain, right? And so you felt that, and because they're 180, right? They're 180 positions, you felt it even greater, and that's the beauty of and great storytelling. Can intention. I just say something, like as a filmmaker, I don't know if mm -hmm. you plan this, but I'm thinking back now, yeah. and that scene was really un like physically uncomfortable yeah. because we yes. literally were all lined up, yes. like 180. And I remember being like, oh, <laughs> like, oh my God, like it was really <laughs> physically uncomfortable to, to shoot that scene. Did you do that on purpose? Yeah, I, I think what's interesting for me is that you go, <laughs> I, I, I don't think, I think you went into that scene expecting to be protected. Mm. And mm -hmm. you suddenly realize, oh, there's another agenda here. Mm -hmm. And suddenly uh, you have to shift your own attitude. You just, you, you suddenly realize that they're not there to protect you. And uh, that your sense of what justice means is going to have to take a very different shape mm -hmm. than what you thought going into that room. Yeah, she's exposed. Mm. So I would say, yeah. Sorry. I, there's so okay. many conversations to continue about this film. And I just want to say we are up for time. And I want to thank, thank you. you all for being thank here. You. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, thank you this amazing cast. And please remember to vote. Thank you. Yeah, great.